Greetings, Race First family. Um, tonight is September 16th, 2024. It's 8.05 p.m. My name is Brother John Hargrove. I serve as president for UNI ACL Division 421 here in Atlanta. Uh, tonight, we will be continuing our uh, Bible or spiritual study group um, as directed by our teacher, the right excellent Marcus Mosiah Garvey, who tells us, uh, read a chapter of the Bible every day, Old and New Testaments. The greatest wisdom of the age is to be found in the scriptures. You can always quote from the scriptures. It is the quickest way of winning approval. Uh, in a later chapter, let me see what chapter this is. If you are angry to the point of fighting. Um it was like this is diplomacy. Angry to the never fall in love to the point of losing. Be courteous, never abuse, don't eat like a hog. Always see the injury. What is this man? One second. Character. Wow, way off. Okay. Hmm. Uh, but in the lesson seven titled character, Mr. Garvey says, if you are angry to the point of fighting, count to 10 and move off. Uh, if it is your wife, family, relatives, or even friends, take your hat and go for, go for a walk. Inhale the fresh air. Look at the sky, landscape, flowers, and stars, and new thoughts will come into your mind. You will forget your anger. Go to your room, lock yourself in it, and take a book of poetry from your bookshelf and read the beautiful thoughts of the past. You may even read the Bible for consolation. Read the Proverbs and Psalms and you will come back to normal. Proverbs and Psalms. Okay, um, okay. we'll jump into um, our chapter of the Bible. We are looking at Old Testament. And let me choose from all Bible chapters at once. First Kings chapter nine. Mm -hmm. All right, First Kings chapter nine. D, D, D. Okay, um, I'm familiar with the Book of Kings as a more a record. I mean, I know the most of the Bible is a record, but Kings is the record of the kings. Um, First Kings of Israel uh, when they came into possession of their own land. Uh, first king being Saul, uh, second king being David. But first Kings chapter nine, um, that's the first king of Israel, second king of Israel, Saul and David. First Kings chapter nine, um, blue letter Bible titles this section, God's promise and warning. And it reads, and it came to pass when Solomon had finished the building of the house of the Lord and the king's house and all Solomon's desire, uh, which he, and all Solomon's desire, which he was pleased to do, that the Lord appeared to Solomon the second time and he had appeared unto him at Gibeon. And the Lord said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and thy supplication that thou hast made before me. I have hallowed this house which thou hast built to put my name there forever and mine eyes and mine heart shall be there perpetually. Uh, so Solomon was the son of David, uh, also the third king of Israel. And if thou wilt walk before me as David thy father walked in integrity of heart and in uprightness to do according to all that I have commanded thee, 
and wilt keep my statutes and my judgments. Then I will establish the throne of thy kingdom upon Israel forever, as promised to David thy father, saying, There shall not fail thee a man upon the throne of Israel. There shall not fail thee a man upon the throne of Israel. But if ye shall at all turn, but if ye shall at all turn from following me, ye or your children, and will not keep my commandments and my statutes which I have set before you, but go and serve other gods and worship them, then I will cut off Israel out of the land which I have given them in this house, which I have hallowed for my name. Will I cast out, will I cast out of my sight, and Israel shall be a proverb and a byword among the people, among all people. And at this house, which is high, every one that passeth by is it shall be astonished and shall hiss, and they shall say, Why hath the Lord done thus unto this land and to his and to this house? And they shall answer, because they forsook the Lord their God, who brought forth their fathers out of the land of Egypt, and have taken hold upon other gods and have worshipped them and served them. Therefore hath the Lord brought upon them all this evil. Cities given to Hiram. And it came to pass at the end of 20 years when Solomon had built two houses, the house of the Lord and the king's house. Now Hiram, the king of Tyre, had furnished Solomon with cedar trees and fir trees and with gold according to all his desires. And then King Solomon gave Hiram 20 cities in the land of Gilead. Galilee. <clears throat> and Hiram came out from Tyre to see the cities which Solomon had given him, and they pleased him not. And he said, What cities are these which thou hast given me, my brother? <laughs> and he called them the land of Kabul unto this day. Excuse me. <laughs> And Hiram sent to the king six score talents of gold. And this is the reason of the levy. And this is the reason of the levy which King Solomon raised for to build the house of the Lord and his own house in Milo in the wall of Jerusalem and Hazor and Megiddo and Gezer. For Pharaoh, king of Egypt, had gone up and taken Gezer and burnt it with fire and slain the Canaanites that dwelt in the city and given it for a present unto his daughter, Solomon's wife. And Solomon built Gezer and Beth Horon, the nether, and Baaloth and Tadmor in the wilderness in the land. And all the cities of the store that Solomon had and cities of his chariots and cities for his horsemen and that which Solomon desired to build in Jerusalem and in Lebanon and in all the land of his of his dominion. And all the people that were left of the Amorites, Hittites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites, which were not of the children of Israel, their children that were left after them in the land whom the children of Israel also were not able utterly to destroy upon those did Solomon levy a tribute of bond service unto this day. But of the children of Israel did Solomon make no bondmen, but they were men of war, and his servants and his princes and his captains and rulers, his chariots and his horsemen. These were the chief of the officers that were over Solomon's work, 550, which bear rule over the people that wrought in the work. But Pharaoh's daughter came up out of the city of David unto her unto her house which Solomon had built for her. Then did he build Milo. And three times in a year did Solomon offer burnt offerings and peace offering, offerings upon the altar which he built unto the Lord. And he burnt incense upon the altar that was before the Lord. So he finished the house. And King Solomon made a navy of ships in Ezion Geber, which is beside Elah on the shore of the Red Sea in the land of Edom.
And Hiram sent in the Navy, sent the Navy his servants, shipmen that had knowledge of the sea with the servants of Solomon. And they came to Ophir and fetched from thence gold, brought it to King Solomon. And it came to pass when Solomon had finished building the house of the Lord and king's house. All of Solomon's desire he was pleased to do. So Solomon was doing what he wanted to do to build the Lord's house. That the Lord appeared to Solomon a second time and he appeared to him at Gibeon. So the Lord appears to Solomon at Gibeon. The Lord said unto him, I heard your prayers and your supplication. And you have made that you've made for me and have hallowed this house, which thou has built to put my name ever there forever. And mine eyes and mine heart shall be there perpetually. So it's as if uh, God <clears throat> agreed with the house that Solomon built. And if thou wilt walk before me as thy father David walked in integrity of heart and uprightness to do according to all that I have commanded thee and will keep my statutes and judgment. So uh, being an obedient follower of God, <clears throat> like his father, like Solomon's father, David, then I will establish the throne of thy kingdom upon Israel forever, as I promised David thy father, saying, there shall not fail thee a man upon the throne of Israel. So if he listens to God, he's obedient to God, God will make sure the kings of Israel are successful. Then I will establish the throne of my kingdom upon Israel forever, as I promised to David thy father, saying, There shall not fail. Oh, that's what I just read. But if ye shall at all turn from following me, ye or your children, and will not keep my commandments and my statutes, which I have set before you, but go and serve other gods and worship them. So if you don't uh, follow God's commandments, uh, this is what God is saying. He will cut off Israel out of the land which I have given them and this house which I have hallowed for my name. Will I cast out of my sight and Israel shall be a proverb and a byword among all people. <laughs> so if we, if the children of Solomon did not, or if Solomon did not follow uh, God's statutes and laws, uh, his children and the children of Israel uh, would suffer the curse listed in 1 Kings chapter 9, verse 7. And at this house, which is high, everyone that passeth by it shall be astonished and, and shall hiss. And they shall say, why hath the Lord done thus unto this land and to this house? So I guess this would be after the house falls, um, which wait, and at this house, which is high, everyone that passes by shall be astonished and shall hiss. Um, so it seems as though the, the house is in a high elevation, but it would have been torn down, uh, destroyed, and people would hiss uh, and speak uh, to the destruction or the, the destruction that that house underwent. And they shall answer because they forsook their God who brought forth their fathers out of the land of Egypt and have taken upon other gods and have worshipped them and served them. Therefore hath the Lord brought upon them all this evil. So uh, that place will be a, a sign of desolation. And it came to pass at the end of 20 years when Solomon had built two houses, the house of the Lord and the king's house. So it took him 20 years to build these houses. Now Hiram, king of Tyre, had furnished Solomon. Uh, the king Solomon gave Hiram 20 cities in the land of Galilee. So Hiram helped build the houses. This is his reward, is 20 cities. Hiram came out of Tyre to see the cities of Solomon that, had, that he had given him, and they pleased him not. <laughs> Uh, so it looks like Hiram was not pleased with the cities that Solomon gave him. And he said, what cities are these which thou hast given me, my brother? And he called them the land of Kabul to this day. And Hiram sent to the king six score talents of gold. Mm -hmm. Six score. And this is the reason of the levy which King Solomon raised 
for to build the house of the Lord and his own house in Nilo and the wall of Jerusalem and Hazor and Megiddo and Gezer. But Pharaoh, king of Egypt, had gone up and taken Gezer and burnt it with fire and slain the Canaanites that dwelt in the city and given it for a present unto his daughter, Solomon's wife. And Solomon built Gezer and Bethrum, Beth Horon, the nether. Uh, and Balath and Tadmor in the wilderness in the land. And all these cities of store that Solomon had and cities for his chariots and cities for his horsemen and that which Solomon desired to build in Jerusalem and in Lebanon and in all the land of his dominion. And all the people that were left of the Amorites, Hittites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites, which were not of the children of Israel, so other nations not of Israel, the children that were left after them in the land, whom the children of Israel also were not able to utterly destroy upon those that Solomon levy a tribute to bond service unto this day. So uh, he lifted a, levied a tribute of service for those nations. Uh, but the children of Israel did Solomon make no bondmen, but they were men of war and his servants and his princes and his captains and rulers. Uh, of his chariots and his horsemen. So he made the children of Israel men of war. Uh, these were the chief of the officers that were over Solomon's work, 550, uh, which bear rule over the people that wrought in the work. Pharaoh's daughter came up to the city of David unto her house, which Solomon had built for her. Then did he build Milo. And three times in a year did Solomon offer burnt offerings and peace offerings on altar which built upon the, to the unto the Lord, burnt incense upon the altar that was before the Lord. So he finished the house. So he finished the house. King Solomon made a navy of ships, made several ships, uh, in Eziang Eziang Geber, which is beside Eloth. Hiram sent in the navy his servants, and Hiram sent in the navy his servants, shipmen had knowledge of the sea with his servants of Solomon. So Hiram went to assist Solomon in the creation of his navy. And they came to Ophir and fetched from thence gold 420 talents and brought it to King Solomon. So they went and got gold, brought it to King Solomon. That completes 1 Kings chapter 9. Okay. Now we're going to jump over to the New Testament. Okay, okay. Uh, Ephesians 1, book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 1, chapter 1, book of Ephesians. Uh, Blue Air Bible considers or well, summarizes this as the blessings of redemption. And it reads, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God to the saints which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Jesus in Christ Jesus. So uh, from Paul to the faithful in Ephesus. Grace be to you and peace from God, our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who had blessed us with all spiritual blessings and heavenly places in Christ according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Having predestinated, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself, 
that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are heaven and which are on earth, even in him, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ, in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayer. Cease not to cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us, Ward? who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set, and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly place, which he, which he brought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, and hath put all things under his feet, and had and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Blessings of redemption. Okay, um, that takes care of our New Testament. Um, now we will jump over to the Holy Quran for a surah. Are they going to make surah one? Surah fourteen is our surah for today. We will read a few minutes of surah fourteen, titled Ibrahim, also known as Abraham the forefather of Judaism and many of, of all Christian and Judaism, Jude, Jude, Jewish faiths, Israelite faiths. Okay. Aleph Lam Ra. This is a book which we have revealed to you, O prophet, uh, so that you may lead people out of darkness and into light by the will of their Lord to the path of the Almighty, the praiseworthy. Allah, to whom belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is on the earth, and woe to the disbelievers because of a severe torment. They are the ones who favor the life of this world over the hereafter and hinder others from the way of Allah, striving to make it appear crooked. It is they who have gone far astray. We have not sent a messenger except in the language of his people to clarify the message for them. Then Allah leaves whoever he wills to stray and guides whoever he wills. And he is the almighty, all wise. Indeed, we sent Moses with our signs, ordering him, lead our people out of the darkness and into the light and remind them of Allah's days of favor. Surely in this are signs for whoever is steadfast, grateful. Consider when Moses said to his people, remember Allah's favor upon you when he rescued you from the people of Pharaoh who afflicted you with dreadful torment slaughtering your sons and keeping your women. That was a severe test from your Lord. 
And remember, when your Lord proclaimed, if you are grateful, I will certainly give you more. But if you are ungrateful, surely my punishment is severe. Moses added, if you are if you are along with everyone on earth, if, if you along with everyone on earth were to be ungrateful, then know that Allah is indeed self-sufficient, praiseworthy. Have you not already received the stories of those who were before you, the people of Noah, Ad, Thamud, and those after them? Uh, only Allah knows how many they were. <clears throat> their messengers came to them with clear proofs, but they put their hands over their mouths and said, we totally reject what you, what you have been sent with. And we certainly in alarming doubt. And we are certainly in alarming doubt about what you are inviting us to. The messengers ask them, is there any doubt about Allah, the originator of the heavens and the earth? He is inviting you in order to forgive your sins and delay your end until your appointed term. They argued, you are no more than humans like us. You only wish to turn us away from what our forefathers worship. So bring us some compelling truth. The messengers said to them, we are indeed only humans like you, but Allah favors whoever he chooses of his servants. It is not for us to bring you any proof without Allah's permission. And in Allah, let the believers put their trust. Why should we not put our, why should we not put our trust in Allah when he has truly guided us to every best, to the very best of ways? Indeed. We will patiently endure whatever harm you may cause us. And in Allah, let the faithful put their trust. The disbelievers then threatened their messengers. We certainly expel you from our lands unless you return to our faith. So their Lord revealed to them, we will surely destroy the wrongdoers and make you reside in the land after them. This is for whoever is in awe of standing before me and fears my warning. And both sides called for judgment, so every stubborn tyrant was doomed. Awaiting them is hell, and they will be left to drink oozing pus, which they will sip with difficulty and can hardly swallow. Death will overwhelm them from every side, yet they will not be able to die. Awaiting them still is harsher torment. The parable of the deeds of those who disbelieve in their Lord is that of ashes fiercely blown away by wind on a stormy day. They will gain nothing from what they have earned. That is truly the farthest, that is truly the farthest one can stray. Have you not seen that Allah created the heavens and the earth for a reason? If he wills, he can eliminate you and produce a new creation. And that is not difficult for Allah at all. <clears throat> all right, we will stop there for this evening. Um, if you would like to I'm going to uh, make an offering call. If you'd like to make a contribution to the UNIA or Division 421, you can do that through Cash App, dollar sign UNIA ACL, dollar sign UNIA 421 Fund, or you can make a contribution to Division 421 through PayPal, paypal.me forward slash UNIA 421. And with that, um, we'll close out for this evening. And prepare for African Center study tomorrow night, Tuesday. Uh, if you would, uh, repeat after me. One God, one aim, one destiny. Africa for the Africans, those at home, and those abroad. Race first, family.